Hi, this is Danny here from PhotoJunction, and I'm here with Nigel, and we're going to talk about the newest version of PhotoJunction 1.22. Now, the major talking point in 1.22 is portable projects. And portable projects was basically our response to a lot of user feedback about how Remix stored the data in the back end. And I guess the general principle for how Remix used to store the data was that it was hidden from people so that you didn't have to worry about things. Now we've we've changed things quite a bit and we held on to that principle as much as we could while now providing flexibility to, to cater for the situations that the users that you guys uh, reported in and said that you needed us to cater for. Yeah, sure. And there were sort of three big situations that kept coming up from feedback we had from clients, um, which Portable Projects is going to help with or um, eliminate the hassle of these. And the first one was when you've got one more than one person working in your studio. So, for example, you've got three or four different computers, but you all want them to be able to access the same PJ files. Now, Portable Projects is um, going to be able to allow you to do that, Danny. Yeah, that's right. So our big studios uh, have been reporting this quite a bit because they'll have, you know, one, two, three, ten different people working in their studios. Sure, sure. And transferring the data in between was quite cumbersome before. Right. So before I get into the software, just conceptually, it's quite easy. We're going to move the new portable projects, as they're called, to a shared location that all of the um, computers in my studio could access. So okay. let's say on a server or on a, on a shared folder. And then we're going to go around to each of those 10 computers in the studio and point them to that shared folder to say, hey, look here for photo junction files. Sure, so that server or that one location acts as a central point which all those other computers can feed off and access those same files. Yep, spot on. Okay. Okay, so the mechanics of doing it is pretty straightforward. Um, if you go to preferences uh, on Mac, that's under the photo junction menu and then preferences. Uh, we've added a new field here called default package folder. And that's simply the mechanism for choosing that shared point on your server. Okay. So you'd have to obviously make sure that each computer can access the server, but that's kind of an IT problem as opposed to, um, you know, the photo junction configuration issue. Right, okay. So you'd, you'd choose that folder and you'd go through on each of the machines and do this, and you'd make sure to hit save. And then every time you use the browse existing projects, um, feature you would be referencing that that shared that shared folder on the server sure so all the pj files on that server would come up would show up under the client's menu there yeah that's exactly right yeah so you'll see all the clients here and and i guess that kind of segues into the the first potential problem that we could have with this so if we both want to access the same file or i come along and i don't know that someone else in the studio is accessing, let's say, Barbie and Ken, I would get an error message to say that this file's already in use. Sure. But when the other person saved it in the studio, I could then access it. Right, okay. When they saved it and, and exited that client, I guess, is the important thing, that project. Sure, and that's sort of fairly standard um, system configuration anyway, isn't it, really? Yeah, uh, often uh, you can't work on the same file at the same time. Right, so. okay. Whoops, this is a post edit. I forgot to talk about high res files and I'll just cover that quickly now. So portable projects don't include the high res files. So that means if you're gonna move these portable projects to another computer or access them on another computer on the network, they may not necessarily have access to the high res files either. If you're in a network scenario, you might have shared the high res files and they are the the other computer will have access and that could be fine but in general if you're sending it to a designer for instance you'll need to include the high-res files and you'll need to go locate those on your own separately outside of photo junction and include them to send to the designer now that's the case if you're sending it to Queensbury's design service or an external third party there's also two other functions that require the high-res files in photo junction that's opening an editor in the tools window and right next door to that is the Photoshop actions button 
both of those two features require the high res files. Okay, now we're back to rec the live recording. All right. Well, the um the the next situation was when a photographer wants to send their PJ files to a designer to work on them, and then they want the designer to send them back to them, um, and Portable Projects is going to allow you to do that. Yeah, that's right. And again, the easiest way to do that is through the project browser. And you'll see your list of clients again as you did before. And it, it's literally as easy as uh, right-clicking on the file, move project to, and in this scenario, I'll just move the project to the desktop. And PhotoJunction tells me that it's already moved it. You'll notice that it still remains here. PhotoJunction now knows, so to speak, that I've put this on the desktop. Sure. And what I can do is grab this folder that it's created, this portable project is, again, what we've called it, yep. and send it to my designer. Okay. Uh, you know, CD or whatever means uh, that you, you used to transfer it by. And then the designer just needs to open their project browser and grab this uh, new folder and drag and drop it in the client's region here. Okay. okay. So PJ basically treats those files like a Word document or QuickTime movie, for example. Yeah, that's right. So you you drag and drop it into the software and it's going to load that software and enable you to use it. Right, okay. And, and when, let's say, the designer's working on it, it's always saving back to this file wherever you have it stored. And then you just kind of reverse that process to send it back to the original, uh, maybe, photographer who sent it to the designer. All right, awesome. And the, the last situation was the issue of backing up or archiving your projects. Yeah, so often often you'll have quite a few of these clients in here and people uh, don't want to use all the space on their hard drive, which is fair enough. Yeah. So you can uh, right-click on these and move the project to, again, wherever you want to. And that's okay to do because it's not going to forget that you used to have one of those clients. Sure. And you still get to keep all of your auto-save templates, all the templates that PhotoJunction created automatically. Yeah. It's just you can now move the, the data, you know, the low-res images, all the stuff that you don't have to worry about. You can move that in one folder and back it up somewhere off your computer. Okay. Okay, awesome. You mentioned earlier, but this is um, Portable Projects is available in the latest release of PhotoJunction. Yeah, that's right. Just to remember, 1.22, which is our newest version, is a beta. Okay. And when you update, you're going to go through a process called migrating, I think is what it's called, where we take the data from the old database structure and convert it to the portable projects. Right, okay. Well, it certainly sounds like a very cool little feature, and um, I don't know too much about programming, but I assume that would have uh, taken you guys a bit of time to put together? Yeah, yeah, it was, and I guess that's why it took so long, because we kind of reluctantly went in, but you can't ignore so many users' requests, and this was this is, you know, quite a highly requested feature. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I guess that probably is, hammers home the point that we do listen and that if you do have feedback, let us know and we'll change the program as a result, even if it is reluctantly. All right, Daniel, thanks for that. That's certainly been very helpful and it uh, looks like Portable Projects is going to uh, sort out quite a few issues that people have been having. So uh, thanks for that and uh, thanks for listening and we'll hope to see you back next time.